Welcome back to John's Films. Yesterday I published a video on slow-mo in DaVinci Resolve, but neglected to show you how to use the studio-only feature of optical flow. Today we're going to take a look at that in depth. We're using some footage I shot a couple years ago at Golden Hour in Ohio. This is a wind farm over a real farm, and you'll notice that it's got some windmills that are spinning and I'm going to use those to slow it down and see what it looks like when we do it with the optical flow and with normal methods. First, let's take a look at what our project is set to as a default. I'll go to Shift 9 or Project Settings in the File menu. And here at the bottom, you can see Frame Interpolation. This determines what the default is across the program when you're retiming footage. In this case, I'm going to use the free version's nearest and allow it to do it just as well as it can with enhanced and better with the medium motion range. This will be the default throughout the project. If I'd like to change that, I can use that through retiming. You'll notice it defaults to these project settings, or I can choose other options as I'd like. First, let's do this with project settings, which as you'll recall, I chose to nearest, and then we can work on uh, the specifics of what it looks like when you improve it. Our first clip is at 23976. I'm going to run it at half speed by right clicking, change clip speed, 50% in the speed field. And now when we watch it, you can see a little bit of these micro jutters. These micro jutters are a result of not having enough data in just the 12 frames a second that it's playing. We can make that even more exaggerated by clip speed and dropping that down to, say, I don't know, 19. Now you will really see it as it ticks from one frame to the next. To get here, it has dropped out frames that were originally in the original 24 that I shot, and you're losing the motion blur that allows your eye to piece all of the pictures together into a moving motion picture. The retiming here has worked. It's changed the speed that the footage plays back, but it doesn't work from a viewer perspective where you're able to see a full motion picture as we intend. So let's do something. Let's go into our inspector and instead of using the nearest frame, let's go with frame blend. Now, let's see what it does. I think we can already see immediately, we haven't even let it play, but you can see that it is guessing and publishing what it thinks should be the next view, but it's adding a blur to it. So this kind of what it does is it takes the frame ahead of it and blurs it into the frame that you've got. Doing that gives you this blurry kind of ghosting effect, which really isn't much better than just the nearest settings that we had set at first. However, there's a better way. In the studio version, you have optical flow, and you can use speed warp. Now, speed warp is engaging the neural engine that exists inside DaVinci Resolve 16 and up, and it is going to infer the frames between the frames. As we play this back, it is rendering, you can see, using the graphics card, and that's because neural networks are better optimized for use by graphics cards. Now, I've let it cache ahead a touch. You can see what it's doing to my GPU, the 2080 Ti. It's having to infer via a neural network exactly what is happening. The neural network, you can think of it as trying a whole lot of different things with each of the individual images, blurring them, using aliasing, not using aliasing, and then estimating which of those variations has turned out to be the best. It then comes to a consensus through all of the CUDA cores and streams that it's working in to determine what it thinks will be the best solution for the next frame. So let's take a look at how it works. It is decidedly much smoother than some of the other solutions that we've looked at. I mean, it is absolutely fabulous in the way that it works. I should note, however, if you get really picky about it, watch the leading side of this propeller blade. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of a bubble haze right here um, where it's clearly covering up and then making up. You can see a bend that's right here in the distance of the road as the bubble pulls up into it. And that is what's being inferred on the front end of that propeller. But my goodness, this thing is amazing. And if we were to zoom out and then play it, you're not even going to notice. This is a fantastic result. I really can't believe how well this works. Now, let's try it with maybe more challenging footage. Here we go. Uh, this is going to have a lot less contrast by which it can use to infer. We'll go clip speed down to 
50 again. Again, this is at 12 frames a second. And it would be jittery. There we go. There's our jutter. I'll change the retime process to optical flow, change most in estimation to speed warp. And now we will induce the pain on the processor. I should say the graphics processor. Oh, yeah. As it comes to the horizon, see that? It had trouble inferring exactly where that blade tip should be when it broke the horizon, given the color contrast difference. This blade seems to be perfect. This blade looks pretty good, except for it looks like it's gotten shaved off here a touch. Now, this is obviously nitpicking, and when you watch this in full playback at full resolution, you're not really going to see it. But there are still opportunities for improvement, namely, you can see right here, a bent blade. Finally, those astute among you will realize, John, that's great. That's uh, only one piece of motion, though. What happens if you are really rocking it and uh, everything in the frame is moving? Now let's go to optical flow, drop down to speed warp. I'm going to shorten this up given the extreme pain this is going to bring on the processor. And we're stuck. All right, I'll let this render ahead. Now that we've cached ahead a bit, Let's take a look at what this looks like. I think we finally found the weak spot. So as we go through here, there is some moray, but then there is some general flickering. Can't really tell what that is. It's like it, it flickers the flooring. Watch the floor right around in here. Bouncing around. And I think it's really just so much detail, it doesn't know exactly when it gets to the neural engine, it doesn't know exactly what to draw where. So we have definitely found a worst case scenario. But generally it is much smoother with respect to like this yellow bar coming at us and the way that it was working previously. But it's not really usable due to the stripes on the moving walkway dancing around so much. So there you are, there's three uses of the optical flow and speed warp that come with DaVinci Resolve Studio's Neural Engine. I hope this helps you with your footage and lets you know when you might be able to use this versus maybe not. Like and subscribe to help others find this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.